Oopsie daisy. So I just turn them off like that. Okay. Hi everyone, say hi so I can see who's here. We are trying to go live on YouTube, but it is very, very slow. So stand by. And for those of you that are texting me, I'm on my phone here, so I can't message you back either. All our devices are occupied. That YouTube is really slow. Hi, Jean. Is she on? Jean's on. Is she on Facebook? I have no idea. That one there. Uh, What's that one? Facebook. Is it? <laughs> hi, hi, Jean. I don't know what else we else. It's just Jean. Because I don't know how long that YouTube one might take to load. Um, there's a few names up there. Why don't you just abandon YouTube? Just download that. Because some people haven't got Facebook. Ah, OK. Have they asked you for that, haven't they? Yeah, well, I said to them I put it on. OK. I'm just wondering if I should run up and get my laptop. I won't go out to. Leave it. Right. <laughs> so, can I close these to make a bit more of an ambiance? And turn those lights off? No. But you're going to anyway. Yeah, there we go. It's a little bit more of an ambiance. <laughs> So, we are going to start, I don't know if that YouTube is going to load or not, but it's loading forever. So, welcome everybody, welcome. Okay. Yeah. So, let's just give everyone a couple of minutes to... So, everyone, so you will be needing um, low cushions, a blanket, maybe if you're cold. I don't know if they've got the straps. And I've just got a load of blocks, but any cushions or anything that you need. Um, yeah. And I'll hand over to Paul. Cushions or pillows. What we'll try and do at the beginning, I say try and do, what we will do is Tanya, when I mention the pose, Tanya will do it without any props, because some people do prefer not using props, although I'd advocate using props, and then we'll show you with props. Super. So I think we'll start in Shavasana. So without props first, because I'd actually like you with this to actually have a block under the bone. Now we are going to be here for about 10 minutes, if not a bit longer. Shavasana, also called the corpse pose, or the pentacle. I like the pentacle, sounds a bit nicer, doesn't it? You're just lying on your back, legs slightly apart, arms away from the body, palms up, and you're literally just lying down there as if you're a corpse. Now it's not, so again, what I prefer is to get a bit more bang out your book, your book is put up some sort of support underneath the pelvis and just there. so you feel a stretch your prostate have a pillow under your head you can have a blanket over you because we are going to be here for several minutes and just set yourself down now the intention tonight is for this to very much be meditation and i'm just cure oh no that's okay that's Now the easiest way to get into the meditative state is to begin by listening. If you simply close your eyes and allow yourself to hear all the sounds that are going on around you. Just listen to the general hum and buzz of the world as if you were listening to music. Don't try to identify the sounds you're hearing. 
Don't put names on them, simply allow them to play with your eardrums and let them go. Let your ears hear whatever they want to hear. Don't judge the sounds. There are no proper or improper sounds. It doesn't matter if someone makes a noise, someone coughs, someone sneezes or drops something in the background. It's all just sound. It just gives you more to listen to. Listen to the sound of my voice, just as if it were noise. Don't try to make sense out of what I'm saying because your brain will take care of that automatically. You don't have to try and understand anything. Just listen to the sound. You will find that you naturally can't help but identify the sound. That you'll go on thinking, talking to yourself inside your head automatically. But do not try to repress those thoughts. Don't force them out of your mind. As you hear sounds coming up in your head, thoughts, just simply listen to them as part of the general noise going on. Just as you listen to cars going by in the distance. So look at your own thoughts as just noises. And soon you will find that so-called outside world and the so-called inside world come together. They are happening. Your thoughts are happening just like the sounds outside. And everything is simply happening. And all you are doing is watching it. Now in this process, another important thing that is happening is that you're breathing. And as you start meditating, you allow your breath to run just as it will. Don't try to do any breathing exercises. Just watch your breath, breathing just the way it wants to breathe. Then notice a curious thing about this. You say in the ordinary way, I breathe. Because you feel that breathing is something you are doing voluntarily. Just in the same way you might be walking. But you will also notice that when you're not thinking about breathing, your breathing goes on just the same. So the curious thing about breath is that it can be looked at both as voluntary and an involuntary action. You could feel on the one hand, I'm doing it. And on the other hand, it's happening to me. And that's why breathing is a most important part of meditation. Because it is going to show you as you become aware of your breath, that the hard and fast divisions that we make between what we do on the one hand and what happens to us on the other is arbitrary. So as you watch your breathing, you will become aware that both the voluntary and involuntary aspects of your experience are all one happening. And that may seem as scary because you may think Am I just a puppet of the happening, a mere passive witness to what is going on, beyond my control? Or, on the other hand, am I really doing everything that is going on? Am I responsible? The truth of this matter is that both things are true. You can see what is happening to you, and on the other hand, you are doing everything. Your eyes turn the sun into light nerve endings in your skin. They detect heat or cold. You, your senses, are creating the world. But when 
not talking about it or thinking about it, then there is just this happening of it. And when you breathe for a while, just letting it happen and not forcing it in any way, you discover a curious thing. That without making any effort, you can breathe more and more deeply. You're achieving something without any conscious and deliberate effort. In other words, suppose you're breathing out. You get the sensation that your breath is falling out, dropping, dropping, dropping out. With the same feeling you had as if you were settling down into an extremely comfortable bed. And as you get as heavy as possible and let yourself go, you let your breath go out in just that way. And once it's thoroughly comfortable out and it feels like coming back in, you don't pull it back in, you just let it fall back in. Letting the lungs expand, expand, expand till they feel very comfortably full. And then you wait a moment, let it stay there, and then once again you just let it fall out. And so in this way you'll discover that your breath gets naturally easier and easier and slower and slower and more and more powerful. And this is what happens when we're in our yin poses, in any of the poses. Settle into the pose and then check in with your breath. And so with these various aids, listening to sound, listening to the interior thoughts, just as something that was going on, not as something you were doing, but just something that's happening and watching your breath as neither voluntary nor involuntary. You're simply aware of these basic sensations. Then you're in a state of meditation. All of our yoga poses are meditation. But don't hurry anything. Don't worry about the future. Don't worry about what progress you're making. Just be content to be aware of what is. Don't be particularly selective about what you should be thinking of. Just watch whatever is happening. So on this pose that you're in now, in this position, you find yourself quite stable, quite solid. And if at any time you ever feel not solid, vulnerable, breakable, then you practice this in order to get solid again. The solidity, the stability of the body will help bring about stability of the mind. And that goes for any of our poses. And therefore, in any of the poses, practice breathing in and out and you become more stable in your posture, more stable in your mind. Breathing in, I see myself as a mountain. Breathing out, I feel solid. From time to time, a very strong emotion overwhelms us. That emotion can be anger, despair, or fear. And when we're overwhelmed by a strong emotion, we feel that we're vulnerable, very vulnerable. And that's too bad because we're more than our emotions. We are more solid than we may think. Therefore, practice being solid like a mountain in all of our poses is very helpful. When you look at a tree during a storm, you see that the top of the tree is not solid. You can only see the tiny branches and number of leaves at the top of the tree swaying backwards and forth. And you have the impression that the tree is very vulnerable, very fragile. But if you look lower down, you see the tree is firmly rooted to the ground. Then the impression that the tree is vulnerable will vanish. 
you see that the tree is much more solid than it looks at the top. And we, the human body, the human person is like that too. We have emotions on the top, but we have the trunk down here, down below. Breathing in, I see myself as a mountain. Breathing out, I feel solid. Now slowly invite your mouth to open your eyes. Bring yourself up to seated. Oh. As Tanya now takes us into the first pose. A pose that Tanya absolutely loves. <laughs> called the gangling. So you're going to bring yourself up to stand. So watching Tanya first. Can I just close that one over because it's nowhere near going to flow. Mm. So, stand and talk with your feet shoulder width apart or hip socket distance apart. Can this come off then? Does it not lead to that? Okay. Dangling. So from there, we nod the chin to the chest. We bend the knees, keep a big bend in. We want a curve in the spine. Bear with us while I take this microphone off. So now, Tanya is bent down. Depends on how far you want to take it. What you can do to make it a little bit tamer is bend the thighs, bend the knees more so that the torso is resting on the thighs. The arms are dangling down there. So if you just turn the other way to the camera, your hands holding on to each elbow. And you're letting the weight of that. So try not. Some people rest the forehead or rest the arms on a block or bolster. I don't prefer that because you want the weight to distract the shoulder joint. So, and as time goes on with all the poses, so to make this more challenging, you'd slightly be straightening the legs a little bit more. Another alternative, the closest thing to a prop is resting the pelvis against the wall. So whatever version you're about, you've got a flat wall or a wall next to you nearby, so it's far more passive now. And you just hold that position. You're going to hold that for several minutes. It's called the dangling. with all the poses. We just want a gentle persuasion on the body to ease off. Try and be stable in your pose. Then bring your awareness to your breath. Try and be stable and steady in the breath. Listening into the body, maybe breathing into any discomfort, visualizing and imagining. With every breath out, you relax, you release, and there's a letting go of discomfort, tension or any pain that you may be experiencing. Visualizing that discomfort evaporating, vaporizing, being carried away out through your breath. And you may find you sink deeper and deeper down into the pose.
as with most of these poses, coming out of the poses, it's nice, a nice horrible, isn't it? So that was the dangling, and now we're going to come on to half wind relieving pose, or knee to the chest. We'll show this without any props at all, but don't push your head. I actually prefer the props with this, you only get a bit more out of it. But it's entirely up to you without props. So, you're laying down on your back with your head, okay. Hands resting on the knee, whether you prefer, you can have them underneath the knee on the thigh. Just let that leg hang, leg hang passively as you bring that knee into the chest. This leg is straight, and that's half wind relieving pose. However, prefer a little bit more bang out your book. Put a block underneath the pelvis. You may want to consider having a block or some support for your head purely from a comfort point of view. Also, you might want to use a strap, and I prefer the strap because it's far more passive, which is what we're after with the yin. We're after switching off muscles and working very, very passively. We're not really aiming to work muscles directly. Muscles are very yang, they're very masculine-like. Although there's an element of, as most things, of yin in there. So the strap around your waist, around your chest, you put it around the knee, or you can put it underneath. And the idea being, the strap holds you in place. Now with the strap in place, that affords you the opportunity of getting a bit more bang for your buck with your arms. Once the channel is actually finished laughing around. So whichever leg first, we are going to do both legs. So, this leg wants to be as straight as it can bring me in. Your arms can either be as the basic arms by the side. <coughs> that doesn't afford us too much. Cactus position is another option. Or you've got some support underneath if you need it. Similar to the dangling, hands holding onto the elbow over the head. Now this brings in the lung meridians and the heart meridians into play. Whichever version, just settle yourself down and be steady in that version. every breath in, allow yourself, give yourself permission to relax more deeply. And as you continue to focus on the sound of my voice, you can also focus on getting a sense of control over yourself, your thoughts, your feelings, your body. Remind yourself that what matters most right now is getting your thoughts together and letting go of past events and focus on a thought of calmness. There have been times in your life when you were comfortable and it's okay to be comfortable now. If you're relatively new to yin, just remember with all the poses, we settle into the pose, we bring our mind and awareness to our breath, 
ensuring we're breathing in and out through the nose and every so often we check in with our body have tissues given can we maybe sink into that stretch just a little bit more but not a lot more we want gentle persuasion on the body to gently persuade it to give in to let go or to relax and release Remembering that that goes for all the poses. And you will find, will you not, that you can sink into a much deeper state of calmness, peace and relaxation. to do is if you're using a strap or well, your head doesn't matter just swap over like straight that's the horrible one isn't it? that one that's been bent and then swap over legs effectively just repeating on one side what we did on the other side One of the first things you become aware of is the fact that only you are aware at this time of what your comfort level is. As I speak and as you create within your mind different thoughts and different images of how you want to feel. I'd like you to appreciate the fact that through your thoughts, you're in control of your body, you're in control of your mind. So the more you focus your thoughts on my voice, the more you will have control over how comfortable you choose to be. And I wonder if you will be reminded of a time, a time in your past, when you were aware of how comfortable your body could be. Perhaps even now you're beginning to notice the heaviness of your body. And I wonder just how you all experience coolness and the calmness that I mentioned before. I wonder if you've begun to notice yet that your body is becoming more relaxed. And I wonder which is more relaxed? Your left side or your right side? And 
that area, which in the past was uncomfortable, is it there, is it here? Is it close, is it far? that are used to my classes as soon as you come out of any pose listen to your own intuition your own self just do what your body's telling you to do first okay let's go to the next pose next pose again we'll try without any props first just to show you what it looks like without any props this next one is the sphinx and i prefer the props because again like a lot of the times when you use the props it's very yin like far more passive take that strap off So the Sphinx, without any props, lying on your front, your feet can be hips on the shoulder distance apart, toenails on the floor. The elbows are underneath the shoulders, the forearms on the floor, and you're pushing and keeping this lifted, so the spine is an extension, you're stretching off and open up the front of the body, the hip flexors. If you prefer that version, you can do that version. It's a bit too yang, I like to be as yin as I possibly can to switch off as many muscles as we can in our poses. So I prefer, trying to put to a different place than that for it, but that's fine. Provided to pass it, so the weight of your torso is really on the bolster. You can have cushions, you have pillows, you have a beam, sometimes you use a bean bag for this one. You can rest your head on a block, or you can rest it in your hands, or you can just let it hang down there. Just gonna be in this pose for a few more, a few minutes, not for too long. have the right to be comfortable. Allow every cell now to remember what comfortable, normal feels like. I wonder how surprised you will be when you think back to a time, a time in your past, when you can remember being able so do the things you like to do. I wonder just what that thing may be. Only you know, but it's a sport, a hobby. Tying your own shoes, it really doesn't matter what it is. All that matters is that you allow your thoughts, allow your memories to focus on that time in your past. Give you a few moments now to focus on that time. That 
happy memory. A comfortable memory. So that you can imprint that memory on every cell of your body and As you do so, just feel every cell release the anxiety, the tension, the discomfort. So you can replace these uncomfortable memories of tension and anxiety and discomfort with the memories of comfort. Serenity. tranquility in every cell. Do that now while I'm silent as you go deeper and deeper. this one butterfly without any props first and again I prefer using props for this one potentially show you without any props first so you sit with your legs out front first or ignore me entirely up to you right brilliant so you sat on your bum Bring both feet in together so the soles of the feet are together. Let the knees just fall out to the side. Try not to have the heels too close to the groin. And then chin to chest, on a breath out, sink your spine forward, drape the head forward. If you prefer to do it without props, that's fine, but bear in mind, we're trying to take as much muscles out of the body as we can, as much use and muscles to hold ourselves in position. We're trying to take them out of it, which is where the props come in handy. If you're prone to sciatica, and purely from a comfort point of view as well, you may prefer to block under your bum. I prefer, as Tanya's doing now, a bolster or some sort of support so that these aren't having to work, the back muscles aren't having to work holding the spine in place. It's not muscles we're aiming at with the in, exclusively. You may choose, depending on what hip mobility is like or lack of, you may prefer to put some blocks underneath the knees or thighs. But the most important thing is, as time goes by, maybe you don't need the blocks, maybe you can alter where you have the blocks, maybe you don't need so many props, maybe you can sink into it a bit more. Always check in with the body. So whatever version you prefer to do. Rule number one, gentle persuasion of the body. We're just after a mild, gentle discomfort after a minute or so, that might ease off and you can sink into it more.
you will find, will you not, that with every breath you find you go deeper and deeper into a peaceful, relaxed feeling. Feeling the peace and quietness, hearing and listening only my voice and the sounds that are around you. Is this not so relaxing, so peaceful? And this is the place you know you want, do you not? This is your place, your special place for relaxing, for being calm, for being peaceful. When you go there, you sleep peacefully. You relax so utterly completely. Your thoughts are calming. Your worries and anxieties just evaporate, vaporize. They leave out through your breath as you breathe out deeper and deeper. And the more you feel free, the more rested you become. And as you sit there, sinking deeper into an even deeper state of calmness, relaxation, quiet, peaceful and still. Quiet, peaceful and still. And that's the description of what your mind possesses at all times. thoughts you may find will no longer be plagued with memories from the past. Or lists of what you need to do for the future. As with all our poses in yin, you are to stay in this present, in the here and in the now. and quiet. of the pose and as, as soon as you come out of any pose just listen to your body what is your body naturally telling you to do half butterfly so again half butterfly without any preps right. without any props which leg do you want to do first right or left right so Open the leg, so you're going to, which leg are you going to bend? Okay, so open the right leg out wide, open it out to the side. Super. So it's out to the side. Time's probably got about 45 degrees. And then, bring the left foot, so the sole of the foot is against the top of the thigh, allow the knee, this hip rolls out and the knee sinks down. So without any props. Then there's different ways of doing this one. The way we're going to do it today is... You're then going to rotate the spine over that right leg and on a breath out, sink into the pose as you settle down. So you open up the hips now, externally rotating the opposite leg, stretching off the hamstring, stretching off the back muscles with a bit of rotation. So with props. Again, if you're prone to sciatica, consider sitting on a block or some sort of cushion or support. Take the pressure off S1L5 joint. 
you may want some sort of prop or support underneath that knee. Numerous things you can do. You can have a bolster, a pillow, a cushion, or you can have a block. I sometimes like to rest my elbows on that cushion or block. Depends on how flexible you are. Just imagine not as flexible. So you can just put your elbows on there, maybe on a block or something. There's numerous options for you, but as ever, after a couple of 15 seconds, every so often just check in with your body. Do you need those props or can you sink a little bit further into them? Always remember in rule number one, gentle persuasion, not too much tension. So if you're just going to swap all the sides. If you want to do anything quickly, do a quick stretch just to stop. Now the left leg. Open the left leg out to the side. Rotate, or sorry, bring that foot in, extend and rotate back in. So the sole of the foot is against the roots of the left thigh. Rotate the spine. If you want to use props, you can use your props now straight away. So you rotate, that's the key one, you rotate it now over that straight leg. Then on a breath out, I apologize my love. On a breath out, sink forward. Again, we're trying to eliminate as much stress, as much muscular activity as we can, because we're trying to work on the fascia mainly. And the second round into that.
every breath in, just allow yourself to relax and sink more deeply. And as you continue, focus on the sound of my voice. You can also focus on getting a sense of control over yourself, your thoughts, your feelings, your body. slowly bring yourself out of that. Do whatever your body is telling you to do, whatever that may be. Oh, you don't like this statue, aren't you? Happy baby. Ugh. Ugh. Happy baby without any props. It's not really many props to use. You can use a strap on the feet. Personally, you'd need two straps, I think, or towels or something like that. But we'll do it without props. Peace fingers, if you can. Peace fingers onto your big toes. So you're lying on your back. Bring your knees into the chest from there. If you can, peace fingers on the big toes. And then what you're trying to do, you don't have to, you can have your feet, just have your hands on your feet on the outside or your hands on your feet on the inside. Whatever works best for you. And what you're trying to do is trying to keep the shins perpendicular, the soles of the feet up to the ceiling, shins perpendicular to the ground, and then you're trying to sink the knees down. As with all the poses, we're just going to a mild degree of tension. So if zero was nothing, and 10 was a bit of pain, you're laughing about a five. You want some tension there, but not a lot. We're in our feminine energy. We're not trying to force anything. We're just gently trying to persuade the body to give in, to ease off. yourself that what matters most right now is getting your thoughts together and letting go of past events and focus on a thought of calmness. There have been times in your life when you were very comfortable and it's okay to be comfortable now. I wonder if you'll be reminded of a time, a time in your past, when you were aware of how comfortable your body could be. Perhaps even now you're beginning to notice the heaviness of your body. And I wonder just how you'll experience the calmness of our legendary. I wonder if you've begun to notice yet that your body is becoming more relaxed. And I wonder which is more relaxed, your left side or your right side. And 
that area which in the past was uncomfortable. Is it there? Is it here? Is it close? It is far. I'm going to give you a, a choice now, but you can either do reclined butterfly or supported bridge. Reclined butterfly. Oh, okay. So, should we try this without props? So, we'll try this one without props first. And again, as always, I just think it's a bit naff without props. This one. Yeah. It's good, but you get far more out of it using the bolster. But without props, you're laying on your back, arms by the side, and we're going into a butterfly. So, you bring in. Your soles of your feet together, but not too close to the groin. No. Yeah. Drop a little diamond. And allow the knees to open. Great. Open up at the hips. Open up at the front half completely. And again, as a basic, arms can be by the side. You can have them in cactus. Or again, a bit better still, because you're bringing the liver and the heart. Not the liver. No. The lung and the heart meridians into play. But you might have to support the arms with a block. So, with props which is far better. There are different ways you can do it, the way we'll do it today. If you've got the props, if you've got pillows, some sort of support, your bum, your sacrum is on the floor as you drape the spine over the bolster. So Tanya's choosing to use blocks for her, her knees, her hips. Again, we want to try and take tension away as much as we can from the muscles. Take the muscles out of it. In this position, it is going to be more challenging on the arms if you have them over your head. So you may want to have some sort of support. You may just want to abandon that and have them out to the side to open up all this chest. The whole front part of the body is opened up. As you open up the chin, looking up to the ceiling, you open up your throat chakra, open up the thyroid. You're very, very relaxed and warm. I'm going to stay in this for several minutes. Continue to feel calmer, even more relaxed, just more secure. And now, as you lie there with your eyes closed, you are so relaxed, comfortable. And happy but you continue moving into a more peaceful more relaxed and even happier state and it may seem like you're drifting into a state of sleep and that's okay Just imagine that the following thoughts come to you. I feel calm. I feel secure. I feel in control. As you continue to relax, listening to all the sounds around you and taking in the beauty of this perfect place, I want 
Don't you tell on yourself to let go even more and relax yourself more and more. More relaxed. And allow yourself to become. Releasing all anxiety, stress and tension. Until you're in the deeper state of relaxation. Than you've ever imagined possible. As we now come into caterpillar, mm -hmm. or dragonfly, I think dragon. Mm -hmm. We haven't done straggle, have we? No, straggle. Sometimes called the dragon, but we've known as a dragonfly. So with our props, as always, with our props first. Sit on your bum, sit upright, open the legs up. How wide? Just the feet till you feel it in the inside of your thighs towards the groin. Sit tall. Hands in front of our shoulder width apart. <coughs> breathe in. As we breathe out, we come breathe out into this pose as you slide your hands forward, maybe resting your forearms on the floor, or maybe, depending on how flexible you are, can you sink right the way forward lay your torso on the floor? Again, I personally have to use props for this. If you're prone to sciatica, if you have sciatica, sit on a block or some sort of support under the bum. You may require, some people may require some support under the knees, depends on how tight you are. I certainly, for this person, need either a bolster or support in the front. Again, so use the bolster the other way, just to show, depends on how flexible you are, you might want it that way, perhaps. Again, just so the, there's a, there needs to be some stress or tension, in particular on the spine, on the legs, but just not too much. And again, every so often, check in. Can you maybe do away without the props or alter the props so you're sinking forward? Don't
don't let ego get the better with all the poses don't let ego get the better you want to gently persuade the body persuade persuade the fascia those collagen fibers that make up the fascia to just realign themselves in the direction that you're pulling what you find after 15 seconds maybe a bit longer for some of this fascia relaxes releases and you can sink further down every time check in with your body tissues given it may be you can sink further down and or maybe open the legs a little bit wider so just every so often check in with the body yourself out to the left and the princess. So do listen to your body. Do whatever your body is asking you to do, is telling you to do, so that you can relax so. And then we're coming into, we're coming to relax, that's it. Coming into whatever pose you want to do.
Traditionally, most people go into Shavasana, the pentacle, the corpse pose. For this last few minutes, probably about 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes of meditation. I'm going to do a sunset meditation. Meditation later is going to focus on eliminating obsessive thinking. That's what it's aimed at. So we'll give you time to settle down the two. Tony's going for a... <laughs> Sleep. What's it called? Ah, no, so on a serious note, so Tanya's laying on her side in a fetal position. She's laying on her right side. She's closing. By laying on your right side, you're closing the masculine energy off. So from a relaxation point of view, laying on your right side is preferable than lying on your left side. Laying on your right side, you're closing off your masculine energy. You're closing off the yang. It's therefore more yin-like more relaxing, more calming. So begin with me now by taking a nice deep breath, slowly exhale, take another deep breath and again slowly exhale. Finally take one more deep breath. And this time, hold on to it for a count of three. One, two, three. Now just slowly exhale. I want you to now picture in your mind a beautiful sunset, a beautiful orange sunset, just sitting on the horizon. And it's as beautiful as any sunset you've ever seen in the past. Just want you to take a moment to look at all the vivid colours that you can see. And as the sun slowly begins to descend, begins to sink down below the horizon, The slow sun slowly begins to descend. You become more and more relaxed. You find you notice all the beautiful colours in the sky. The evening is so peaceful. You continue to breathe deeply. As the sun slowly descends, sinking deeper. Now you breathe in, breathe in that wonderful peacefulness and calmness and relaxation. And as you exhale, breathe out all the worries and tensions and concerns you may have just let them leave your body through your breath, evaporating away, vaporizing. And I'm going to begin to count backwards, beginning with 20 and with every number, I want you to continue to breathe deeply, to continue to focus on the sunset. With each number I count off, sinking even deeper and deeper down. As I continue to count, perhaps reaching the number 12, the sun will have 
completely set and as the sun completely sets you will become you will be completely relaxed 20 becoming more relaxed 19 18 Deeper, 17, 16, more and more relaxed, 15, 14, 13, deeper still as you absorb the peacefulness and the beauty of this incredible sunset. Your eyelids are becoming very heavy as you go deeper and deeper in relaxation. Twelve, ten. Becoming more and more relaxed. Breathing in total relaxation and peacefulness. Nine, eight. Deeper still. Seven, six. The sun is now completely set. You're so totally relaxed. So very peaceful. Three, two. And all the way down deep. And finally. And I wonder if, with your mind's eye, become aware of the beach, an isolated beach, with only you, the gentle waves, the warmth of the sand on your feet. gentle breeze of the wind. Now, people find this relaxing, but others find it very relaxing. You can smell the sweet smell of the ocean air. And isn't it fascinating to realize that with every breath in, you take in, you become more relaxed. The tension leaves your body with every breath out. That's right. As you're looking at the ocean, you see palm trees peacefully giving in to the wind. As if the movement is calling you to relax. Between the trees, you see a place to lay down. So see yourself lying between the trees. Gentle breezes blowing softly over your body. You will notice, will you not, that with every breath you find you go deeper and deeper into a peaceful, relaxed feeling. Feel the peace and quietness. Hearing only my voice and the sound of the waves. Is this not so relaxing, so peaceful? This is the place you know you want, do you not? This 
your place. A special place for sleep where you go there, you sleep peacefully. Your dreams are calming as the waves wash the sand into the sea, so does your worries and anxieties. The dreams are peaceful, fulfilling dreams, dreams that make you feel free. And with the freedom you are so rested, The more you feel free, the more rested you become. As you lay there, you sleep. And as you sleep, the ocean gently rocks you with its healing touch. Quiet, peaceful, and still. Right, that's the description of what your mind possesses at all times. Your thoughts you may find will no longer be plagued with memories from the past or to-do lists of the future. You are to stay in this present Calm and quiet. Now, isn't it interesting to know that you are in complete control of your thoughts and your thoughts will be clear and in the now. Anytime you feel yourself drifting into a pattern of obsessive thinking, Just simply tell yourself to stop. And your mind will be completely still, completely calm. You'll be one with yourself. And you'll no longer race from one thought to the next. You probably know that people say less is more. And the less thought you have, the more value you will have to your thought. They will be more creative, peaceful, and willing. Your mind will think less. No more dwelling. No more obsessing. Just quiet, peaceful nothing. And you notice you find it easier to relax and unwind. You'll find it easier to receive the answers you're looking for. And to find the connections you need. Because with your mind quiet, everything is going to fall into place on its own, is it not? Whatever it is, it will suddenly fall into your lap because you were quiet enough to listen. This quiet you will find will 
help you to remain calm during stressful moments. become a better listener. To be a better friend, lover, parent, child. This quiet, calm mind will help you to feel better and to be a happier person. Everything you desire can now be attained because you will now let it happen. You will no longer fight against yourself. Or let yourself be a victim of the past. You are a new person. And you probably know, do you not? You probably know a person can enjoy life because you're no longer obsessing over every little thing. Here and now, you are living in the now and your mind is clear and there's no doubt enjoying being in this moment as a balanced observer. Take a breath in, bring yourself back into the mat, back into your space, back into the room. Open your eyelids, just orient yourself, have a stretch, have a yawn, come off whatever blocks or position you're in. Be brave, Tanya, and take your blanket. Sit yourself up. <laughs> From my heart to yours, my beautiful wife. Namaste. Namaste, my love. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Namaste, everybody. Namaste. Namabha. Namabha. Oh, when you stand up, be oh, yes. slow and gentle. How did you? Hope you all enjoyed it. We had a bit of technical issues with YouTube. Okay. But I hope you had a lovely evening and we're going to go and have some dinner now. Dinner? So, well, we to eat you or food or potatoes even. Oh, Lots of love. Bye. Bye.